okay, he don't work. He don't, he don't. I think, well, I'm lying. I think he just started working after, what, 38, 39 years? I think he got his first job. But you had uh, you had three sons um, um, by him. I did when I was 16 or 17 years old. How old are you now? 38. So when did he? When did the father not? When did the father be, not be not become shit? Uh, probably when my twins were about three. Oh, so all of them are three of them are twins, or only two of them? Huh? It, are three of them are twins, or just two of them? Maybe only two of them can be twins. If it was a oh, third, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So he. <laughs> He doesn't communicate with sons at all? Um, no, not really. He never helped you out financially? No. So what, what, what point that the gap between you and him, when y'all had some type of connection, what, where did that fell apart where you and him actually went? Where are you? I just thought that he didn't. He he wanted to continue to be a child and do childish things. And I was like, well, fuck it. I got three children. It's time for me to do some shit to be an adult. And he never, never caught up. I moved on, started doing adult things, getting houses, getting jobs, working, taking care of children by myself. And he wanted to continue to be a dope boy and a girl, other women and stuff. He had three other children. Oh, uh, so he's he still he's still out there reproducing, but still not building anything for the for the for his future or the exactly. kids' future. Exactly. So he never been on child support, is it? Hmm. He never been on child support, is it? I can't hear. You. He was never on child support, is it? He, I put him on child support when the twins turned eleven. I didn't do it when we were younger because I felt like we were really, we were young when we had children and I thought that was unfair to just right out the gate put them on child support. But um, if after 10 years you didn't get something, you didn't do anything to contribute to the Okay. So what do you want me when you when I'm talking to these boys? What do you want me to focus on? I mean, because obviously their father weren't in their life, and you know you're doing contracting, so a lot they in their mindset they're on their own, you know, which they are. And one of them you don't even know you don't even know where where he stays at. So the so Tom so uh so Til 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 uh Talil, he wants to be a rapper, right? Okay, so let Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but right now you don't want them to admit with this uh with um with this thing with um 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 Ukraine. Uh, I, this this is gonna get 
um, nasty, and we're gonna we're gonna end up putting boots on ground, no matter how hard they fight it. And um, um, Putin is actually he's testing us to do it. That's the only way he's gonna stay in power. He, he has to create a a, a a war. He has to create something that allows him to tell the people when his time is up for his for him to step down and say, well, I can't step down because only I can protect the country and carry it through. And it's not the good time to have uh, uh, elections, democratic elections. Um, so I'm going to give one of them a call. Uh, I suggest that when you go on vacation, um, you kind of write down what do you want to achieve with these young men because they're still young men. And maybe they're, maybe you have to need it. Even though the father, and, you know, a lot of women say the father ain't shit. They never did anything. Maybe you might need to be the olive, the olive branch and reach out to him one last time and have a family uh, counseling, you know, get a therapist or something. And, you know, not to, you know, even though he'd never been anything in his life, he could have been in prison all his life. The, the kids were lacking from both sides. And, you know, they're at a point where I, I see you're going to be bailing them out a lot and financially a lot, not saying you're doing it now um, because you're probably trying to make up for your mistakes in their life or mistakes of choosing the wrong person, uh, especially that, 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 the one that you don't realize who he's staying with. He's staying, he's staying with a friend and then one staying with your mother and the other one, um, I'm thinking, is in college. And I, I know I've done contracting for years. My kids, I've been abroad for my kids and giving them the best financially and material things in life that a lot of their friends didn't get. But they, their mother was there. And so I had a connection with the mother. I had a connection with the community. So my kids still got the best of the best of the world. But in your situation, there's that gap where the father is out there and doesn't want to be there. And he's continuing to make more kids. Um... And that's the issue right there. I don't like men keep multiplying and just make, you know, every time you have a kid you and, and the kid is not by the mother, your father, your wit, what you did, you split up the family household income or the family ability to build wealth. So now I'm in a household with you. Suppose we are married and I'm a household with you. You make it 60, I'm making 60,000 a year. It's 120,000 household. But now I went and had a kid for somebody else and move on. Now in the household, income of building wealth has split in half because now I have two households I have to provide for. But he's not provided for either. Probably um, not. So I'm going to talk to him. The ones, the rapping ones, I probably can get them thinking about contracting overseas because there's a lot of guys that go over there in Kuwait that are making music, want to be rappers. The beauty of it that they have resources and connection that they would never have in the United States. And they actually can produce videos and things like that. Um, little or nothing and be in countries and places that a lot of the rappers here or will never be able to shoot that type of video or get that type of a uh, connection. Um, even with the rappers, the rappers and entertainers, that's just the entertainers, song singers, whatever, they make the bulk of their money, not in the U.S., they make the bulk of their money in a national touring. And this that gives them a, a chance to see why they make the amount of money, how the distribute, distribute of... Uh, uh, you know, franchising and things like that. And at the same time, they can fund their their career if they want to that way. They can meet up with other people that are trying to do the same thing. Because uh, I got two young ladies in Kuwait now that are trying to be uh, songwriters or singers. And they might make it and not, might not make it. And two, two, two people that actually did movies. Um, one, the guy died a couple of years ago. He made a movie called Toxic People with His Wife. And okay. people on base, if you look it up, it's probably on YouTube. And some of the people on the base were in the movie. Uh, it didn't become no big hit. It's on Amazon, things like that. Um, but it allows you to try to live out that dream. So at the end, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not have regrets on how much money you spent on it because you're making the money to spend on it. And you can always say you did it. Now, the basketball player. It depends on if he's a starter, depends on how size the school is, and depends on if he's already feel he's being scouted. But again, he can take that opportunity 
See, he can't when you when you already when he start when he already start playing basketball in college, he can't stop. If he stopped, then it, it, his years of eligibility still goes against. That's the that's the trick thing of once you start college and you start a, a sport. If you drop out of school and then you say I'm gonna go back to college three years later, those three years you didn't was in college still went against you as being eligible to play um, um, sports. That's why just anybody can't leave college four years and then go in the gym and come back this beast on the football field on the basketball court and think they're gonna play it or not. They they want the eligibility won't be there unless they get injured and they they'll do like um give them an extra year or something like that. So if yeah. he's starting and he feels like he has the skill set, because any everybody that plays basketball, football, all of them believe he got the skill set to go to the next level. He's not going to go overseas and do contracting, um, because you know he he's uh, high off the potential dream of achieving and entertaining the uh, college students and actually you know performing for the school. So that that's not gonna that's not gonna happen, um, unless he gets to a point where he's depressed and he hates basketball. Um, he just want to get away. The younger two, the twins, they might be possible to convince to just give it a year, um, and if they don't like it, they can always uh, quit contracting. So I, I'll right. give them a call. Um, I don't know if they answer the phone, and I'll try to see where their minds at, their heads at. I uh, advise them to, I mean, you know, mothers don't approve of it, but I advise them to reach out to their fathers, let them know the decision they, they're trying to make. Um, you know, I know the dad wasn't there. Mm. Yeah. But did y'all ever get any type of counseling for it for them? How Hmm. What what type of issue were you having with him? What 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 type of issue was you having with them to to see that? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this their last name is, is what their father's last name. 
Okay. And the third son, he's from another father. Three of them from that from, from him. So he has a total of five. He got about a total of five kids now. So what 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 is, what what are what are these women being drawn to in him? I mean, is he a is he a pretty boy? But everything was on you. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna probably. All right. So, um, I'm gonna give them boys a call. If not today, um, um, in the morning, just let them know they be getting a call from me. Um, they, you know, and we'll now let's. I'll give you a report on what I feel, if they're going to do it or not, or at least convince them to give it a, that, you know, two months try. Um, they can always quit and go back home. If not that, get the secret clearance that come for, come with it and utilize uh -huh. that to uh, to go to the next uh, level. Um, yeah. So I'll get back with you later, okay? Okay. Thank you. No problem. So I don't know if this record for... You guys are here, uh, 17 minutes, so I'm going to probably talk about two minutes. Um, my business is helping people find uh, employment overseas, right? It's very lucrative right now for the household and the family doing well. Um, you know, me and my wife together, we made the decision that you know, it's okay to keep the business going because of the money it brings in, um, you know. And these type of situations that makes my business so unique is that this is a client, right? And you've seen some of my videos where I'm on the phone with my clients and you're thinking I'm on my phone, I'm on the phone with a friend, associate, whatever. That's actually a, a business client. That's a young lady. Well, she's not young. She's 38. That's a young lady that was referred to me by somebody else. She never met me. Don't know my first name or last name. Had never physically seen me. She was referred by referral because I did good work for them. And that's why my business has grown and is successful uh, because 98% of all my clients are by referral. So I always tell them that if you don't trust your referral, you're not going to trust me. So this young lady has given me a copy of her passport, driver license, social security, bank, all the stuff I need to help her get to her financial success. She's actually currently overseas working as IT personnel. And people think IT make a lot of money. In some cases they do. But a lot of times you are IT and that field is professional to you because when somebody looks at somebody that works in the computer, they're looking at a professional. But in her situation, you always have your IT skill set, but she needed to make finance. So the, what she was making was not enough to sustain. It was enough to sustain her household, but her household was building wealth like minute, but she needed to get that money to build that wealth like this. So I got her the job making like 50000 more. Um, and it's tax-free 
and you know housing and stuff is paid for. Um, this client is has a lot of immaturity in herself, even though she you hear a lot saying she has mature. And if you listen to it in a way she hasn't, she still holds regret and remorse against the kid's father. Uh, she say he wasn't shit. He probably wasn't. Um, but they never came together in unity as a family and try to find try to find that bridge that uh, uh, what they have in common, you know, to to help those boys. As you can see, she had three kids from him. So he wasn't shit for so many years, but she kept having kids from him. Um, and then he went on to have more kids and then he went on to have more kids. So he has a total of three, four, five, six, seven kids, three mother fathers. And if he's not really working, she says he's trying to be a dope boy. He's not really working. He's not taking care of him, you know. And a lot of men make that conception. I'm taking care of my kid. Once you hit three kids and then you're not making $100,000 a year, you're not really taking care of your kids. They're going to have to be, you, you, there's going to have to be somebody getting assistance from the United States government. Because for you to be making only 30 some thousand a year and saying you're taking care of your three kids, then taking care of your three kids, what I mean is like, are you building college savings funds for them? Are you making investments for them? Things of that nature. Taking care of your kids and them is all oh, like, I bought them a pair of shoes, I bought them clothes. But it's not. Um, so I'm going to have to talk to these young men. And, and like I said, this I don't really even know her. It's, we did a business arrangement. It's, it's, going, it's, it's almost finished. She referred three other people. And a lot of my clients, being they know I'm a man when I'm on the phone, a lot of my clients are women, women with kids at home, and they're making a sacrifice to go to other countries to work, to build this wealth, to pay off their house, to take care of their kids in a certain way that a lot of kids don't get taken care of. And they always reach out to me and get into these conversations and situations where they say, can you talk to my sons? Can you talk to my daughters? Can you talk to my husband? And that's crazy, you know, not even knowing me, you know, and I need counseling myself, you know, with, with, I have situations in my household where, where we be working out things and these people be thinking I can save their household, I can save their sons, I can save their daughters. And in some cases they listen, um, in some cases they don't. So as you see right there, what, what the youth is lacking a lot now is mentorship. Mentorship guiding them to that career setting, that wealth building, what they want to be in, what they want to do in life. Like I told her, the basketball player is not going anyway. You know, playing college ball is a natural high. It's like a woman dancing on the stage, and she says, I'm only dancing to pay my way through college. And she graduated through college. She get a nursing degree, and you go back to the club, and she's still there dancing because she's addicted to it. He's not going to stop playing basketball until they actually let him, until he finish college, and he can't play no more. And then he might try to go play overseas ball. The other two young men, they might be somebody that you can influence wise if you can get on their level to get them to understand the investment of their rapping and singing career is more effective internationally in Europe and these countries where they're going to be so unique from the average street rapper or the person that's doing entertainment and music there. You know, their dollar will stretch farther and they will have access to uh, resources, access to real estate, things like that, that a lot of these People in the United States would never be able to to able to be able to go make a music to make a rap song, right, or make a music or entertainment and go do it at a hotel in Dubai that has sharks swimming in your hotel floor, or the walls of your apartment is actually an aquarium. You know, the guys in the United States would not be able to ever do that because it costs a lot of money to go over there to fly, and they don't even know that exists. You know. To be in a mall that has a canal that floats through the middle of the mall, you know, um, it's a lot of things over there that it can make it be unique for other people. Actually, learn another language and change their 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 rapping style, where they're adding Arabic or India 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 language or or Salon or, 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 or um, da, da, I think it's Daf Dafsu or or African just just mixing it up. You know, so I didn't mean this video to be long. Um, you know, I'm gonna post this, and then I'll do the next video when I when I get time to talk to these young men.